Hey, welcome to Sylvie's Technique Vlog. Um, so I'm in a little bit of an awkward position <laughs> because I need to set up the camera so that you can see my feet because what I'm gonna be talking about has a lot to do with foot movement. So uh, I'm gonna be moving in and out of this space. So I'll try to talk here and then I'll just move into the space. But this technique vlog, um, if you guys, I haven't done them in a while. So if you guys are not familiar with my technique vlogs, they're not demonstrative or instructive necessarily. They're more about um, techniques that I've learned or picked up or remembered or bringing back into my training and I'm really focusing on and I've thought a lot about. So uh, it's, it's not like a do it just like this and this is where you put your foot and this kind of thing. It's more like thinking about techniques and kind of how they work and how they fit into larger styles or why strategically you would use this one instead of that one and that kind of thing. Um, I have a free version that's on YouTube for everyone to watch. I have playlists, you can watch these. And then I have a longer explanation where I go way more into detail about um, how it connects to different things, where it came from, uh, how it fits into the Muay Thai library session that I usually have learned it from, uh, how I'm using it, that kind of thing. That's, that's for my patrons. So if you're a patron, you can go watch that as a patron. And if you're watching the free version on YouTube and you'd like to become a patron, very easy to become one. Just click on the link in the description. So what I'm talking about in this technique vlog is kind of a convergent evolution of techniques. So divergent evolution is when uh, one species kind of becomes two distinct species in order to solve something. And so you get um, you know, one kind of horse that works this way and then a horse that becomes a cousin of a horse because it does something else. Convergent evolution is what I'm talking about here with these techniques, which is where two completely different species will develop the same thing to accomplish the same task. So like a bat wing and a dragonfly wing don't look anything alike because they're completely different species, but they accomplish the same task of being able to fly. That's what this is. This is two very, very different techniques to accomplish the same thing of basically corralling and controlling your opponent. So I got these two techniques and they're not specific to these people in any way. Um, but I got these two recently from Nung Torani, who, uh, <laughs> that's, that's Char Chai, sorry. I did go see him, but that's not who I'm talking about. Nung Uban and Lam Namun. So Nung Uban is a femur fighter and uh, Lam Namun is a Muay Cao fighter. And both of them are doing very different techniques to accomplish the same task of keeping the opponent right in the middle of them. This is a really important thing because all of your power, like the most power you have is all just kind of right down the center line of you. So how do you keep someone in the center of you? One is to kind of bap, 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 like uh, low kick and hook and kind of keep someone in the middle of you this way by kind of like tapping them and keeping them in the middle. So this is something that like, um, Takra Lek, who is a moibu, so he's always coming forward, he likes to leg kick. He's basically tapping you to keep you in the center line all the time as he's tracking you down. Then you have um, the kind of uh, corralling someone into the ropes or into the corner so that you know they're gonna be right here and then you can attack them. Uh, this is something that like Diesel Noy is incredibly good at is he's basically like, I'm going to be uh, second, I let them go first, I spoil what they're doing, and then I get them into the ropes, I know they're right here, and I attack them. Um, another femur version of that is Karahat, who basically, by faking and forcing you to defend yourself, he puts you in a position where he knows that you're gonna be in a particular position, and then he can punish it, because he knows what that shape's weaknesses are. If he knows, for example, if he can force you, if he can force you into this position, he knows exactly what all these openings are and he knows where you can't strike. So he doesn't have to worry about this whole half of your body anymore while you're blocking and he can actually just attack this side. So that's his way of kind of like forcing you into a position so that he can take advantage of it. The two I'm gonna be talking about because I just was working with them and I find it really, really interesting is um, Nung Uban, who is gonna be kind of like a dancing around. This is really, this is not like complicated he had this blue thing at his gym. It was basically like PVC pipe. I'm gonna be using a selfie stick to do it. But basically you put that in the center of your shadow boxing space. And then you're gonna shadow box around it so that you're constantly, you're constantly moving around your opponent like this in order to be able to kind of control them, keep them in the center. It's important that you don't wanna be this far away from your opponent. You never need to back up this much. You can practice in your shadow boxing, defending, being back like this, but then you wanna cut off 
so that you can then come right back to being close to your opponent. So this is basically like you're cutting them off with your movement. Someone else, also a femur fighter, but with a lot of power, is uh, Turt Giet. Turt Giet taught me that when you teep, you then want to come down to the side to be able to like power off. And you're basically corralling and controlling your opponent by constantly cutting them off and moving around the sides of them um, in a very like circular angling way instead of in and out on a train track. The other version of this is um, what Lamnamoon does, and Lamnamoon was actually making fun of me. So he didn't teach me this as a like, this is the way that you do this. He actually taught me this as a, you are doing this wrong. <laughs> and when I was noticing what I was doing wrong, it became very clear to me why he does this or why he's making this correction. It was like very like, obviously I can see what's wrong with what I do because I'm not accomplishing this thing, which is what he does, which is he's constantly keeping his opponent in the center of his body by stepping outside of them with every step. He is a darning fighter. Like he is just gonna track down <laughs> and kill his opponents. Like he is not, he doesn't dance a lot. He doesn't gallop a lot. He doesn't move especially fast. One of the things that I love about his style is that he doesn't break pace as he's coming in, but it's pretty steady. Like he is just hunting you down as opposed to like leaping across space or kind of like flurrying. He really doesn't do this. He is just constantly wearing you down. He's like a persistence hunter. So in this case, I'm gonna use the selfie stick again, even though this is not what Lamna Moon does. If this is your opponent, what I was doing is I'm stepping in the middle of my opponent and trying to knee, in which case they can just get out of the way, or I knee and then I kind of come down and have nowhere to go. What he wants me to do is to constantly be stepping outside of the opponent. I'm gonna back this up so you can see that. So basically if I block, I wanna step out, bong, and my knee is there or if I go here, I'm always outside so that as my opponent is moving, if I keep staying right outside of them like that, I'm constantly corralling them to the center of my body, which is the center of my power. A knee here is not nearly as hard as a knee up the middle, and you do that by, again, this is why you step on kicks across the opponent, is to put them right in the center of your power. Someone who's incredibly good at this is Chmuk Pet. Shmuel Pet is a knee fighter, but he's the most femur knee fighter you'll ever find. He's a true chameleon, changes all the time. But what's amazing about his movement to me is that he is just in these like micro adjustments like this, constantly keeping you right in the middle of his power. And he does this with his punches coming slightly to the side, but all of his power is straight up the middle, which means he has to position his body and kind of like a, a missile doing these like micro corrections, keep his opponent right in the middle where all his power is. He really does not do a lot of uh, wide stuff, which is amazing because his gym mate, Panam Tulin Lek, is all like sweeping around the sides. Like he puts his opponent in the middle and wings himself out to the side so that he can go. So he's like a, a pendulum that's always hitting right at the center of its power like this. It's truly incredible that they're from the same gym. But so the way that I've been practicing this is um, I do both. I do a lot of footwork. Uh, Yodkun Pan made a really big deal about me doing footwork every day, doing multiple rounds of it. So for a long time, I've been doing only footwork shadow boxing, um, which is basically what it looked like when I was doing the uh, Nung Uban movement around the selfie stick, is you're just using, your weapons aren't necessarily coming out. You're just doing a lot of footwork to move around and get very comfortable where your feet can move in any direction. So that's one way to really start working on that kind of movement of corralling your opponent and staying around them. You can also do this on the bag so that your weapons are coming out, but you need to have a bag that has enough room around it that you can go all the way around it. So if your bag has like got a wall on one side and you can't really fit behind it, not ideal, but you could at least do like a half moon around it this way. You wanna have pretty significant space not so much space that you're really far away from your target. You want to stay within striking range of it all the time. You should be able to teep it at all times or touch it with your arm, whatever. But then you kind of move around this way. So footwork is the main way that you're going to be practicing the Nung Uban kind of um, corralling. It's still footwork when you're doing the Lam Moon thing, but you're going to be doing a little bit more like tracking. You don't want to be on a train track. Like you never want to be only going forward and backward, but it's much more like pervasive, <laughs> persistent coming forward like this. So with that one, I, I may step back from the bag a little bit as though I'm chasing an opponent in order to be able to kind of charge in, or I'll just be doing kind of like lines and little circles around a space to be able to do it. So this looks a little bit 
if I have a bag hanging right here, I'll back up from it a little bit so that I can come in, step out and do like this. Or you can just, I'm not gonna be interrupted as I'm coming in like this and you just kind of keep, you keep your feet from doing something like this where they're too close together or you kick and it comes back too far behind you like this. You wanna keep always this idea that there's someone right in the center of you here that you're kind of moving around and your feet are gonna be what kind of keep that in the middle. So these are things that you can really work on on your own. You don't need your coach's permission or help <laughs> to do that. Uh, if you do it in shadow boxing and on the bag, then you can start using it uh, in your pad work or uh, in sparring would be really good because those become less predictable. Those become, you're trying to actually track someone and cut someone off and kind of get someone into positions or shapes or whatever, but you're really trying to keep someone at the center line of your power and you do that either by moving your body around them or by stepping to the outside of them like this and kind of like keeping them in the center, um, like a train that's got <laughs> a reverse cattle rack that's gonna be pushing everything to the front of it rather than like pulling everything to the side of it. So those are the things that I'm interested in and looking at uh, and working with right now in my own training, very inspired by Nung Uban and Lam Namun. Um, again, Yod Kun Pan and his footwork and all of his shadow boxing, you can watch his shadow boxing session. Um, it's an hour of instruction on shadow boxing, which is really amazing. Uh, Turk Giet in the Muay Thai library, he has this, uh, after every move, you kind of step up to the side. And Chamuk Pet has three sessions in the Muay Thai library. Um, so I highly recommend you check all of those out. It's very instructive, very helpful, and they all have very different styles. So you're taking these concepts and these strategies and these techniques that are from very, very different styles, and you can work on them and see which ones really speak to you or feel good to you or don't feel as good to you, and why is that, and does it fit within your style or not, and you kind of like take the things that feel really good and maybe work on the things that don't feel as good in case it's a weakness, and maybe it's not a weakness, maybe it just doesn't speak to you, and you're like, okay, that's not really the way that I do it. Like, I'm not gonna be, <laughs> I'm not gonna be a super dancing around fighter, that's just not my style, but I work on it a lot because there are times when I'm winning already and then I can start going backwards, and being able to kind of like get out of the way of someone um, is really helpful, even though that's not how I'm gonna be spending the majority of my fights. And if you're one of these dancing around moving fighters like this, if you're losing, eventually you're gonna have to really go after someone and you can't necessarily do it in a flitty way when you're behind on points and you really need to go track them down. So working on both ends of that spectrum, regardless of what kind of style fire you are is really important. So have fun, enjoy those sessions, think about stuff and um, work on it because that's how you get good at things. All right, thanks guys.